So we're staying in our work set best practices. And what we're going to look at now are some tips and tricks for working with those work sets in your Revit structure project. So when you're working with the local file, which we've got open right now, always be selective about which work sets you open. If I go to the Collaborate tab right now and go into the Work Sets panel here on the ribbon, you'll notice that none of my work sets at the moment are editable. Now, if you remember in the previous video when we signed out of Revit, we relinquished all of our work sets here. So basically, none of our work sets are available to us because we haven't made them editable to us as user one. So just make sure that you are user one. Go to your options in your application menu. There you go. I'm user one there. OK, I'm going to OK that. That's fine. We know that the data location for the user files is OK because we set that in the previous video. So if I go to work sets now, what I need to do is make sure that the work set that I need is editable. So I want to work on structural columns. So I say yes to that. It's now editable. And as you can see, it's opened as well. But the owner is user one. So if anybody else wants to use that work set, they will need to get permission by borrowing elements. So I'll OK that now. And that structural columns is now available for me to work on. You'll notice here now, structural columns is the current work set at the top of the list. Click on it and it's editable for me because I've signed it out and said yes to make sure that it's editable. Limit the number of work sets. That speeds up the process of opening and saving the file. Also, close unused views on a regular basis when you're working in a Revit project. In here in the project browser, you'll be clicking on different views to do different things. If you go to your view tab on the ribbon and select switch windows here, you'll see that you've got all those different views open. So you don't want all of these views open. That slows down your PC. Your graphics card as well struggles if you've got lots of views open. So go to the view that you want and close it. Again, switch windows, go to the view that you want and close it. Switch windows again, and I'll close the first floor plan as well there. And then I'm back with just one view open, which is my ground floor plan that I want to work on. Just get into the habit every couple of hours or so, just checking that. So it's view and switch windows. Also use a starting view that is a drafting view a 2D plan or an elevation. That way your file will always open quicker. So in manage here, starting view is there, like so, and select a view. Select a view that you want to start with in your Revit project. That way, if you make sure that it is something like a drafting view, a 2D plan or an elevation, there's not a lot of data there. If you start in a 3D view, it's gonna take a lot longer to open. If you've been away from an active project for some time, we're talking hours, days, weeks here, not minutes. It's better to create a new local file. It's very easy to do. You just go up to the open here, like so, and you select your central file there, and you get the option to create a new local file. So create that new local file, just rename it a slightly different file name. So at the moment, that's local 001 user one. I might set it up as local 002 user one instead so that I know that they're different. If you're not sure what work set to put certain elements in, then use the work set one, the default work set. So if I go back to collaborate here and look here, I've got work set one. Just put it in there. It's like a miscellaneous work set. It's the default one. Put it in there until a decision with the design team is finalized so that you know which work set those elements are gonna go into. And also restart the software before performing any memory intensive operations. Things like printing an entire document set to go out to a client. Always restart the software, just to make sure that everything is reset, it's a lot easier. When you're saving to your central file, so for example here when we're synchronizing, yeah, you wanna make sure that you stagger those saves. Don't do them every five minutes. Do them every half an hour, every hour, every 90 minutes, something like that. Because if you've got a big team, all synchronizing to that central model. It's gonna make the server struggle. It's also gonna make those channels, whether they're network cables or wireless, struggle with the amount of information that's gonna go through the bandwidth. Also, if you type RL, reload latest, that will reload the latest information to your local file. There's no new changes to load in this case, it's telling me, so I can close that. 
but always do that to update your copy of the project without changing the central file. So if anybody's made changes to your work set or other work sets that you're using, those changes will update if you type RL. It stands for Reload Latest. Periodically synchronize with the central file using the Compact File option. So that's again synchronize with central here, synchronize and modify settings, and compact central model there. It is slower. It takes longer to save, but it frees up more memory because you're using a lot of temporary memory within your operating system to work on that local file. So do that once in a while, not every time you synchronize, but every fourth time that you synchronize, for example. If you get an error such as unable to save or file not found, which I don't tend to get because I've got a reasonably high spec laptop, it might be that you've run out of memory. Close the major work sets that you're using so that the Revit software releases some of the virtual memory. This temporary virtual memory gets used up very quickly if you've got a lot of heavy work sets open. And then save the file, and then what you'll find is it will run quicker. When you're requesting edits, when you want to go and edit a work set that is signed out by somebody else, enable elements, not work sets, whenever possible. This way, the Autodesk Revit software automatically borrows those unowned elements without user intervention. It saves time by not having to request an edit in the first place. And communicate. Make sure that you communicate with your design team. There is nothing worse than working in a design team that doesn't talk to each other. If you're all in the same office, talk to each other. Don't send things via email all the time or by Microsoft Messenger or Skype or whatever. Make sure that you have regular design meetings, something like a Monday morning meeting every week on project updates, and then perhaps a quick half hour update meeting each day on what's new to the project, what's happening with the project. Always communicate and avoid working on the same elements at the same time. It might just be that you're turning around to your neighbor who sits next to you in the office and say, oh, are you working on that work set? They might say no. They might say yes. If they say no, that work set is free. If they say yes, okay, well, can you just sign out of it so that I can do this? That's all it takes. Communicate with your design team. So there's some tips there for using your work sets in Revit structure.